This video was brought to you by my loyal patrons. Pledge today and receive exclusive perks. Link in the description. We talk a lot about trains on this channel. And if you know me, you know I am a devout model train collector with a collection that currently spans over 150 models. Here is everything I own. I did a collection video back in 2021, and then I had exactly 100 models. Quite a few more have been obtained over the last couple years, and some others have been sold on or tossed aside since the last time we saw everything. With the new layout underway, I figured the start of 2024 is as good a time as any to make an updated collection video. So let's head on over to the turntable and take a detailed look at everything here, one by one. So we will start off the collection with models from the pioneering era of railways in the mid 19th century. Some of the oldest engines built and still survive today. First up is Hornby's fabulous model of Stevenson's rocket. The first successful steam engine ever built. I'm a huge fan of this model. It still astounds me how Hornby were able to get a motor, pickups, and a DCC decoder in a model this tiny. And it runs as smooth as butter. Next up is Lion, a much later 042 tender engine by Rapido. I never really expressed much interest in this engine, but Hattons had a sale late last year selling these for only $100 each, and I just couldn't pass that up. I'm pretty impressed with this guy. It's almost entirely die cast and weighs a lot more than you think it would. Really impressive little thing. And that's all I have for Pioneering Era. On to my favorite era of railways, pre-grouping. The era when England was coded in various railways of different companies, all with steam engines in a variety of different colors and liveries. Should be no surprise that this section will make up a huge chunk of my collection. First up is the Caledonian Railway, of which I only have one representative, the lovely 812 class. Number 828, in as preserved condition by Bachman. I love that dark royal blue color. It's so very tasteful. This guy was a Rails of Sheffield exclusive and rather hard to get a hold of now, at least for a decent price. Next up, we have the Great Central Railway, the first of which is an 8K class, number 1185, in the lovely fully lined out black livery. This one was a part of Bachman's Collector Club series and is extremely hard to find now. Next up is a fairly recent purchase, the ginormous 9N class tank engine number 373 by Sonic Models. Probably the largest tank engine I own. It's heavy, detailed beautifully, and it runs well. The only issue is its rear pony truck which tends to derail on points in reverse. And ending the GCR engines with the 11F class number 501, Mons. The beefiest 440 tender engine I have ever seen. Another stunner by Bachman. It's heavy and it runs like a dream. Here's our only Great Eastern Railway representation and one of the newest models in the collection. The C-55 class tram engine, number 127, aka the real Toby. This guy came in a train pack that included two Whiz Beach and Upwell bogey tram coaches. One of the best packs put out in a long time. Rapido hit it out of the park with this one. A Thomas fan has to be working at Rapido. It can't be a coincidence that they chose Toby's Great Eastern number for this, right? Whoever you are at Rapido that chose number 127 for this pack, I salute you. And on to the Great Northern Railway, kicking it off with one of my top five favorite models ever, the gorgeous Sterling Single number one by Rapido. This has got to be one of the finest model trains ever made. 
with all the ornate detail and chains, working firebox, and the clever plug between engine and tender. Due to its limited release, this girl goes for so much online now. But thankfully, Rapido is doing another run of the singles. So hopefully, that will bring the price down by a substantial margin. Another exclusive, the C1 class number 251. I love Atlantic Tender engines. There is just something so elegant about this wheel arrangement. I got this guy at Locomotion in Shilden when I was there in 2018. And I cannot believe that that was six years ago. Wow. And finishing off the GNR with the N2 class number 1730 by Hornby. A somewhat older model now, but it still looks pretty good in my opinion, especially when done up in that awesome GNR apple green. On to the Great Western Railway, presenting engines built before 1923. First up is the 2301 class, the Dean Goods, number 2309, by Oxford Rail. This was Oxford's second ever model, I believe, and it's a very good one. It's a shame Oxford hasn't made a new model in a while, because they present quality stuff at an affordable price. And here's an engine I'm sure a lot of you will know right away, number 3717, City of Truro. People always ask me why I went for this livery for Truro instead of a more well-known early one with the full red frames. And my answer to that is because I wanted a model of Truro in the guise of which I saw the real engine in 2019. A model means a little more when you've seen the real thing in person, you know? On to the Isle of Wight Central Railway, with its only representation here being this lovely little terrier, number W11, Newport. The first of many terriers we'll see in the collection. This guy came in Hornby's recent Isle of Wight train pack, which included the engine and three four-wheel coaches. A very nice pack, and a rather attractive livery on this terrier. I love those red side rods. And you know what? Here's another terrier. Moving on to the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway now, here's an engine that we all know and love. Number 655, Stepney by Hornby. I really love Hornby's new terriers. They are quite detailed little models for a pretty affordable price. Another top five model of all time for me, Bachman's fantastic E4 class. Number 579 in the utterly beautiful umber brown livery with gold lining. This truly is an underrated model, I think. The body is almost entirely die-cast. I love Bachman's E4 so much that I bought two more, but we'll get to those. And another top five model of all time for me, Bachman's drop-dead gorgeous H1 class, number 39, La France. I love Atlantics. I love the umber brown livery, and I love that double-banded boiler lining. Truly a stunner. And again, it runs like a dream. Bachman sure knows how to make an attractive model train. On to the London and Northwestern Railway now. Our only representative here being the improved precedent class number 790 Hardwick in as preserved condition. A nice looking little model, but it's rather overpriced for what you get in my opinion. Still happy to have it though. And on to the London and Southwestern Railway. Here is the 415 class number 488 by Hornby in its as then preserved condition on the Bluebell Railway. Many of you will probably know this guy as Adams from the Railway series. I really like Hornby's radial tanks. They perform much better than Oxford's. But I do not know what they were thinking with this color. I like it just because it's different than everything else. But that highlighter green is definitely not accurate to the real engine. This is one of my first ever models in the collection, and I got this guy at Hamley's in London. Here we have an M7 class by Hornby, number 254 as preserved at the National Railway Museum in York. I really love this version of the LSWR livery. That darker green with the chocolate lining is a very attractive combination. I wish more models existed in these colors. And here's another terrier, one of two that worked on the LSWR. Number 735, again wearing that green and chocolate livery. Hornby is never consistent with LSWR green. I swear, every time they do a new model in this livery, it's a totally different shade. Then there's more. Ah, ah, there we 
Waco! Here's Mod from the North British Railway. The only ever North British Railway engine made in double O. And this one is special. It's got to be the only time Hornby ever produced an engine with a removable snowplow. I love running Mod with it on. It's just so unique. I wish we had more ready to run snowplows on this scale. Here's the E1 class from the Northeastern Railway, number 2173 by Bachman. A rather smart looking side tank engine. I feel like I don't run this one as often as I do the others. Maybe I should change that. And here's our first electric engine in the collection. This is the new ES1 class, number one by Rapido. And Rapido, once again, hit it out of the park. I love running this thing. The giant lamps on both ends work, and it's so quiet when it runs. Rapido is quickly becoming my favorite model train manufacturer. They always choose the oddball engines that people want. And here's a pretty unique one in the collection. The 75 class, number 116 from the North London Railway. You all may know this guy as Cromford as preserved on the Bluebell Railway. This here is a custom model using the body produced by CDC Design fitted to an Electrotrain 060 chassis. I eventually want to line this guy out in red and white and return it to its original as-built condition. I already started the lining, but I didn't get far on it. One of these days, I will finish you. The first of several Southeastern and Chatham Railway engines here. Here is the Bachman C-Class number 592 in as-preserved condition on the Bluebell Railway. A very beautiful engine. I'm not sure any livery out there beats SECR Green. There's just so many colors going on here, also ornately designed to be as attractive as possible. I love it. And here is the D-Class number 488 by Dapple. Another stunner, no doubt, but not the best runner. I kind of hate Dapple if I'm honest. I don't think I've ever been fully happy with any of their engines. This one is very light, there's very little die cast on it, and it comes factory fitted with traction tires on its drive wheels. It's also really delicate, and parts fall off it quite easily. You might notice it's missing a buffer on its tender. Yeah, I have no idea where that is. I pulled this out one day and it was just gone, so that's cool. Many people have asked me if I plan to use a D-Class for an eventual Edward model, and my answer is no, purely because I'm not a fan of how this one is constructed. But at least it looks pretty. Another Terrier! This one is number 751 by Hornby, the only one that worked on the SECR in real life. This Terrier is in fact preserved in real life. Its name is Wadden, and it resides in Canada. Another example of looks fantastic, but isn't very well made, Hornby's H-Class, number 308. I love the way this one looks. I've never seen a shinier dome on a model train in my life. It's a pretty limp model though. It weighs nothing, and its performance is inconsistent. It doesn't go very fast at high speeds, and it can barely pull anything. Sadly, I don't run this one that often. And finishing off the pre-grouping section, with the lovely little P-Class, number 178 as preserved, also known as Nettle the Cuddle on the Bluebell Railway. This is one of Hatton's original models, and they really made an impression with these. They're pretty heavy for the size, they're detailed to the max, and they are affordable. At least, at the time they were. Good luck trying to get one of these now. Hatton's just recently announced their closure, and I was just gutted by that news. Rest in peace, Hattons. Your closing is going to be one of the biggest losses to this hobby, and you will be missed. And we're on to the Big Four now, which, for those who don't know, refers to the era when all the British pre-grouping railways were grouped into four big different railways that spanned across England. All the models in this section of the video either were built during this era, or wear liveries from these four railways. We'll start with the Great Western Railway. Kicking this section off is, well, a rather disappointing one. The 1361 class, number 1364, by Helgen. It's a very nice looking model, but it's a pretty bad runner. When I first got this, it gave me issues right out of the box, and I had to send it back for a replacement. And even the replacement doesn't give all that great a performance. It's quite fragile too, Pieces break off this thing so easily. It's a very fun engine, but eh, not the best model out there. 
Here's the 6400 class, number 6424, by Bachmann. Basically, a smaller version of the more common 5700 class pannier. It's a Bachmann pannier, it runs great, I have not much more to say here. And here's a very rare one now, the 1400 class auto tank, number 1420, by the now defunct DJ Models. This was a model the hobby desperately needed, as prior to this, the only 1400 on the market was the crappy old Dapple one. Sadly, DJ Models went out of business a couple years ago, and this newer 1400 has become impossible to find now. Some time ago, I planned on turning this into Oliver, but considering its worth, I think it's smarter to just keep it as is. On to the LMS now, with only one engine representing. Yeah, I still don't have too many LMS engines. One day I'll fix that. This is the Jubilee class number 5593, Colipper, a Bachman Collectors Club exclusive. I love the Jubilees, they're probably my favorite LMS class, and they wear that crimson lake maroon oh so well. And now on to the big boy, the LNER, with plenty here representing. First up is the B12 class, number 8573, by Hornby. I got this guy at a model shop in Edinburgh in 2018. It's a pretty nice model, very weighty. Here's a familiar sight, Sir Nigel Gresley's famous A1 Class Pacific, number 1470 Great Northern by Hornby. I just had to have a version of the A1s as they looked when they were first built. And what better one to get than the first of the class? I love this era of Hornby models, where the models were very weighty and the tenders could be easily disconnected with no pesky wires. I wish they returned to this way of manufacturing. Shh, we have a celebrity here. We don't want to startle him. This is the W1 class number 10,000 by Hornby, better known as the Hush Hush. An experimental engine with a marine boiler. It's quite the sight, isn't it? I actually never planned on buying this one because the price was just too high for me but I ended up finding it at a model train sale on the Bluebell Railway in 2022. Someone was selling it for a bargain, basically brand new, and I couldn't help myself. I'm quite happy with this one, it's a good model. That is, if you can find one without the smoke deflectors broken off. Another big one, the P2 class, number 2001, Cock of the North, by Hornby. This is the older release of the P class, not the fancy new one with the all die-cast body. For what it is, I think this model is pretty nice, and I like it. It's definitely a striking engine. And what is any British model train collection without a Mallard? This is one of Hornby's many, many, many releases of A4 class number 4468, Mallard, the fastest steam engine in the world. This is the only Garter Blue A4 I have in my collection. I would love to eventually grab another and line them up. One of the few Edward Thompson engines that I rather like. This is the L1 class by Hornby. Originally numbered 9003, I went ahead and renumbered it to the first of the class, 9000. The only one to get the thicker shaded lettering, and I just think it looks better. I love beefy tank engines, and this is a fun one. On to the LNER's goods engines now. First up is the J11 class number 5317 by Bachman. The J11 is what I use for my James model, though I used a different version with the rounded dome. This one has the flat-topped one. Another Oxford engine! This is the J27 class, number 1214. I love, love, love the lined-out black livery on this thing. All black with those red stripes is rather fetching. For a brand new tender engine, the price for this guy was really affordable, and it's a quality model too. We love you, Oxford. Keep doing what you're doing. And here's another beefy fella, the Q6 class, number 2265 by Hornby. Quite an unusual one, an 080 tender engine, something rather uncommon on railways. I'd love to eventually line this guy out with red lining like the J27. I think it'd wear stripes quite well. And our final LNER engine, the J50 class, number 585 by Hornby. I love this model, it's another one of Hornby's finest. This thing is a brick, it weighs a ton, and as a result it runs beautifully. All the lining on this one was added by me. 
I originally wanted the lined out J50 that Hornby did, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I went with the unlined one and took matters into my own hands. And I am quite happy with the end result. And saving the best for last, on to my favorite of the big four now, the Southern Railway. First up is another Terrier, number 2662, originally named Martello. I saw and rode this exact Terrier in this livery at Bressingham in 2019, so I just had to get a model of it. Here is Oxford's version of the 415 class, number 3520. For how affordable this model was, I can't really complain. It's good for the money. But this was Oxford's first model, and it notoriously has issues with its front bogey. It can't swivel up and down, so this guy gets stuck on gradients. I do not recommend buying this if you have any sort of hills on your layout. Even the smallest change in grade will cause this guy to stall. The E4 again! This one is number 473, also known as Birch Grove, as is preserved currently on the Bluebell Railway. The E4 is one of my favorite ever models, so of course I had to get a model of the preserved example. I like Bachman's take on the Southern Olive livery too. I think it looks better in this darker shade, and the white lining and numbering really pop on it. And here we have the H2 class, number 2421, South Foreland by Bachman. You all know me, I love Atlantics, so I had to get the olive one to complete the trio. Again, I love that darker shade of olive on this. Here's a King Arthur class, number 736 Excalibur, the first of the class. Pretty nice model for its age. It's again one of those from that era of Hornby that I love, where the engine is weighty and the tender disconnects easily. And here is the goods version of the King Arthur, the S15 class, number 824. Another one of the first models in my collection, but I don't really have all that much to say about it. It's nice. Moving on to the Oliver Bullied era of the Southern Railway, here is an Isle of Wight engine, an O2 class, number W34, Newport, in that gorgeous Malachite livery with the sunshine lettering. This was originally a DJ Models engine, but this one is the EFE re-release. It looks good, but it wasn't worth the price in my opinion. There is no die cast to be found on this, and the side rods are plastic, sprayed to look metallic. It's one of those things that once I notice, I can't unnotice. Oh ho ho, here we go! Oliver Bullied's first engine, the Merchant Navy class, as first built. This is number 21C3 Royal Mail, the third of the class. I love the Merchant Navies in all their forms, but there's just something so modern yet elegant about the original design. It's very striking. I'm tempted to call this a top 5 model for me, but I think it's just out-edged by another that we haven't looked at yet. So I'll say this is number 6. And the bullied design that everyone's probably a bit more familiar with, the West Country class, number 21C123, Blackmore Vale, as preserved on the Bluebell Railway. Again, I couldn't be a Southern fan without a model of their most recognizable locomotive design, and I figured I might as well get a preserved one that I've seen in person. Here's the Ugly Duckling, the Q1 class, number C8. A rather unappealing engine to the eyes, but I love it. I love the weird oddball designs like this. It makes a collection far more interesting in my opinion. And our final of the big four, another Terrier. This is an Isle of Wight one, number W13, Carisbrook by Hornby, in that transitional era livery from 1948, still in its southern Malachite colors, but with British Railways on the side in the sunshine font. I love the transitional liveries, I wish there were more options on the market. And so we've reached 1948, the year the Big Four Railways all conjoined to form one giant railway network across Britain following World War II, British Railways. It's not my favorite era, but I have a good selection of models from it. So let's take a look at them. We'll start British Railways off with all the engines in my favorite BR livery the short-lived Express Blue, a rather elite livery worn by only the strongest passenger engines. 
Kicking this off with the A3 number 60103, Flying Scotsman himself. Bet you never expected him to wear blue, huh? It was a goal a while back for me to obtain a model of every class that wore BR blue, and I figured for the A3, I should get the most famous one. I love the A3s in blue, though that's probably because I'm a bit biased. Next up is the King class, the only great westerner to wear the blue livery. This is number 6025 King Henry III. I actually bought this model from Hornby's main storefront in Swindon in 2019, before they closed it a couple years back. I thought it only appropriate that I buy a great western engine while in Swindon. Next up is an A4 class. Number 60024, Kingfisher. This guy came in a train pack called the Rare Bird, complete with three teak coaches. It's quite a nice pack, and this may be a controversial opinion, but I think the A4s look their best in BR Blue. Here is some rare LMS representation in the collection, a Coronation class by Hornby. This is Coronation number 46225, Duchess of Gloucester. This is a model of a rebuilt version of the streamlined coronations. You can tell it was a streamlined one from the slanted top on the smoke box still being present here. I always thought that was a neat little design trait. It's a fun little tell. And finishing off the blue guys is a peppercorn A1 class, number 60161, North British by Bachman. The same class as the real life Tornado, who we will also see here in a bit. On to the more boring liveries now, starting with BR Green. First up is another A3 from Hornby, this one with smoke deflectors. This is number 60049, Galti Moore. Just love that detachable tender. Hornby, please return to this. Another preserved A4, number 60008, Dwight D. Eisenhower. This is the one that is preserved in America, so I had to get a model of it. I gotta represent, right? One of these days, I would love to fly to Wisconsin to see her in person. Soon, Dwight, we will meet. And another preserved A4, the very next one in number order, actually. Number 60009, Union of South Africa. A neat difference between this and Dwight are the nameplate colors. Union has a bright red one while Dwight's is black. I think the black one looks a little classier on this livery. What do you all think? Union of South Africa is the only A4 I've actually ridden behind in real life. I saw her while she was still in steam at the Bluebell Railway's Giants of Steam event in 2018. She's sadly stored away in Scotland now and won't be returning to steam anytime soon. Another bullied, this is the Battle of Britain class, number 34067, Tangmere. I definitely prefer the Malachite livery on these, but I gotta admit, the Bullies wear BR Green quite well. The crests on the sides really pop. And the final ever steam engine built by British Railways, 9F class number 92220, Evening Star by Bachman. Bachman's 9Fs still hold up really well in my opinion, and they're detailed quite immaculately. I'd love to see what all the fuss is about with Hornby's new super detailed 9Fs, but I don't know. I'm quite happy with Bachman's. I think I'll stick with it for now. Behold, the first diesel we will be looking at today, and quite a poor one. This is Dapple's new 121 class bubble car, specifically number W55000. I bought this with the intention of using it for a model of Daisy, but holy moly this thing sucks. It looks great and it has working directional lights, but the mechanism in this is garbage. The motor is so weak. So weak in fact, it can't carry its own weight. Just look, it, it's struggling to carry itself around the curves. How, how did this even pass quality control? Thankfully, I bought this at a massive discount, so I didn't really see a point in sending it back, but man, Dapple, you have just the worst track record when it comes to engines. Here is another diesel, the Class 55 Deltic, number 55002, the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry. Whew, that's a mouthful. By Bachman. An older model, but it still holds up fairly well in my opinion. 
I love the giant yellow ends on this one, something I think that was exclusive to this diesel in real life, wearing this livery. And this time a Helgen diesel, the 17 class, number 8539. And I'm happy to say that this one performs fairly well. It's not great, it's not a totally smooth runner, but it does the job. I bought this to represent a certain diesel from a certain train show. I don't know, you might know who. Now on to the Black Locos. First up is a Duke Dog class from the Great Western, number 9017, Earl of Berkeley, as preserved on the Bluebell Railway. Call me crazy, but I feel like the Great Western engines wear BR Black pretty well. Next up is the only standard I own, at least for now, the Standard 5 class, number 73082, Camelot. Again, as preserved on the Bluebell Railway. Don't really have all that much to say about it. And here's my only Gronk, the 08 class, number 13238, by Bachman. I love this thing. Bachman's 08s are the best in the hobby, in my opinion. I don't know why Hornby thinks they can get away with charging 189 pounds for an 08 when Bachmans are just as detailed, run just as well, and you can get them for less than half the price. This one is awesome, it's a literal brick. I bought it to represent, again, a certain diesel from a certain train show. I can't place his name though. And our final British Railway Steam Loco, and a pretty fun one at that. The USA class number 30064, wearing a lovely Malachite livery. This number was in fact preserved on the Bluebell Railway, although she has seen better days. She was purchased by a private buyer in 2022 and is currently under overhaul. Here's hoping we'll see this engine steam again in the next few years. One more BR logo, and it's a diesel. A Class 45 Peak, number 45114 by Bachman, wearing the corporate rail blue livery. This is such a well-known livery, yet this is the only model I own sporting it. I will have to change that at some point. This is another older model, but it holds up quite well in my opinion. And we move on to a section I like to call Industrial Railways, aka engines from railways that were owned privately and made their money from goods traffic. The following are all engines you would see in big yards or works or plants, usually shunting wagons. First up is Associated Portland Cement, with one of their Peckett B2 tanks named Westminster. Hornby's Peckets are really something. The amount of diecast used on these is pretty wonderful. And I wish that they produced more industrials, and less crappy beetle sh**. Next up is Brighton Works, with their designated engine, aptly named Brighton Works. A terrier from the LBSCR that was retired from traffic and painted back into the original improved engine green livery, the first engines from Brighton War. This model was a Hornby Collector Club exclusive and is rather hard to get a hold of now. Next up is Dorking Greystone Lime Works, represented by the very cute little well tank, Captain Baxter, preserved today on the Bluebell Railway. This model is entirely custom, using a 3D printed body from Shapeways and fitted onto a Hornby Pug chassis. This model was beautifully painted and detailed up for me by Thomas Tank Merch, and I cherish it greatly. Sadly, she is not a good runner anymore, and she barely works. I would love to redo Baxter at some point, with a better chassis. Here's Huntley and Palmers, who had many bright blue Peckett W4 tanks. This one is simply numbered C, and was a part of the Huntley and Palmers train set Hornby did a few years ago, complete with three exclusive wagons. This is one of my fiance's favorite engines in my collection. It's a cute little one, with a blue that really pops on it. Imperial Chemical Industries, or ICI for short, had a Barclay tank that worked at their dye stuffs division in Huddersfield named Katie. This poppy red saddle tank. Another wonderful and affordable little model from Hattons. I weathered her up myself because I thought the model looked a little too plain without some grime. Inland Waterways and Docks, or IWND for short, had several tank engines. This is one of their Victory Tanks, number 12. This is the fairly new model from Planet Industrials, their first ready-to-run one, in fact. And for a first model, they did a great job. 
This thing is heavy and it runs smoothly. I love me a chunky tank engine. What a shock, another Terrier from the Kent and East Sussex Railway. Here is number five, Rolvenden by Hornby in a very appealing dark blue livery. The rather popular London Transport, known for their token red pannier tanks. This pannier is number L97 by Bachman, and it came in their Midnight Metropolitan set, complete with a set of London Transport wagons. This red livery is my favorite livery that any of the panniers wore. They just look so good in it. My only national coal board representation, the Hunslet Asterity Tank number 1763 that worked at their Peckfield Colliery. This model was made by the now defunct DJ Models. And man, oh man, DJ knew how to properly weather a model. I bought this because it looked like 16 from the Railway series. Simple as. It's not a fantastic runner, but it looks great. Straight from Peckett and Sons Engine Works is a Peckett W4 class, number 560, wearing the works leaf green livery. One of Hornby's finest, the first ever 040 in 00 that actually runs smoothly. This model really was a game changer for the hobby. I can only imagine how many of these were bought to be kit bashed. And our final industrial from Rustin and Hornsby is their little 48DS class, number 269595. The tiniest model Hornby has ever made, and shockingly a great runner. I love that this is designed to connect to a special flatbed with extra pickups to ensure it runs without cutting out. That's great workmanship on Hornby's part. I like running it without the flatbed though, because I just think it looks funnier that way. Now on to one of the most fun eras to model in my opinion, Preservation Era. Preservation Era is so fun to me because there's no rules of what color an engine can be. It can be painted in whatever for fun. It's preservation, who cares? And if people don't like it, well, it'll get painted into something else eventually. The following are all models of real life engines that exist today, wearing liveries they only ever wore after being retired from working service. Who better to kick off the preservation section than the poster boy of the first preserved standard gauge railway, Stepney, from the Bluebell Railway. This Stepney is a custom. I used a Hornby Brighton Works as a base, rubbed off the name and number, and added Stepney name decals and a 55 number plate onto it, to reflect how it currently looks on the Bluebell Railway. One of the easiest mod jobs I think I've ever done, if I'm honest. And another top fiver for me. Hatton's ever lovely Bluebell. One of the most impressive little steam engine models out there. The details in the livery are immaculate, and she runs like a dream. Hatton's planned on making another run of Bluebell, but with their impending closure, I don't think that's happening anymore. Making this little gem quite rare. If you have a Bluebell, I'd recommend you hold on to it. It's gonna be worth a fortune one day. Another Bluebell chum, Birch Grove again, but this time wearing its name on its side tanks, as she did in early preservation. This was a Bachman Collector Club exclusive, which makes it, again, quite rare now. And here she is, the crown jewel of my collection. My favorite model ever, and the one I want to be buried with. Hornby's Flying Scotsman, in her USA tour guise from 1969 complete with cow catcher, bell, whistle, and second tender. This model is the 2013 release, which included the Devon Bell Observation Coach. I have spent many hours over the years eye-ogling this thing. Scotsman's USA Tour is my favorite story in railway history, and I just had to own a model of her from it. And what's one USA Tour flying Scotsman without a second one? For Flying Scotsman's 100th birthday in 2023, Hornby released a selection of Scotsman models with their all-new A3 tooling, including the USA Tour one. And I just had to have it. Not only does this version have a full die-cast body and a glowing firebox, but it also has a working headlamp. Dare I say, I think I prefer this to the 2013 model, but the 2013 model holds a special place in my heart. Or it was the first. 
I absolutely love the way this one is packaged. In a special gift box with foam padding, a certificate of authenticity, and a metal token for the 100th birthday. Quite the collector's item. Here's a funky one. Fairburn Tank number 2085 in Caledonian Railway Blue, as she wore in the 70s. From what I understand, this was a controversial livery, but I love it. The blue used on the model here is definitely too light a shade though. It looks more periwinkle than it does blue. It's another Bachman Collector Club exclusive, so kinda rare now. My only Jinty, and the best one in my opinion. Number 47357, sporting a lovely BR Maroon. The real engine wore this livery in the 90s, I believe. Red Jinties are the best Jinties, changed my mind. Here we have another Merchant Navy, but a rebuilt version this time. This is number 35005 Canadian Pacific, wearing BR Blue as she did in the 90s. The Express Blue livery was retired in 1952 or so, and the Merchant Navies weren't rebuilt until the late 50s. So in reality, they never would have worn blue in this condition. But I think it looks fantastic on them. Everyone recognizes this one. This is Hall Class number 5972, Olton Hall, dolled up as Hogwarts Castle from the Harry Potter films. I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but my favorite character from the films was always the train. This model is a fairly new release, complete with a working headlamp. Pretty neat. We got another Scotsman here. Here is Flying Scotsman in her guise from 2004, sporting the LNER Apple Green, and the smoke deflectors from her BR days. I understand that this look was also quite controversial, but I think those people just hate fun. I love this combo, and I wish they'd paint Scotsman and Apple Green again just like this. Here we have Tornado, the first steam engine built since Evening Star in 2009. This Tornado model is by Bachman, and is far better than Hornby's Tornado in my opinion. Tornado is wearing the 1948 transitional livery here, complete in LNER apple green with British Railways on her tender. And our final preservation engine, a Great Western Prairie Tank. This one was repainted into London Transport Maroon and numbered L150 in honor of the Metropolitan Line's 150th anniversary. Great Western engines just wear red so well, don't they? This was an exclusive to the London Transport Museum in London, and is of course, pretty rare now. While my layout currently doesn't have a section for narrow gauge, I do have a selection of 009 scale narrow gauge locos. I'd love to one day find a way to implement a small line for them, but only time will tell. Let's take a look at what we got here. Representing the Festiniog Railway is the George England number one, Princess by Cato. The fact Cato of all companies made this is pretty amazing. It's the first British loco that's available worldwide. You can go onto Train World or Amazon and just order this. It's a nice model, though it's pretty light in my opinion. I wish I had more die cast on it. Next up is one of the Festiniog's double fairlies, and I'm probably going to butcher this pronunciation. Murden Emrys, I think. A fantastic little model by Bachman, and one that took everyone by surprise. I love how no one knew these were coming out, only for Bachman to surprise everyone and announce them two weeks before they dropped. Pretty smart business move to be honest. Release them while the hype is high. I love this version of the Fairleys with the open center cab. I'm very glad they made it. And I couldn't have an open cab Fairly without a proper covered one. Here is Livingston Thompson in maroon with the complete covered cab. Livingston Thompson is the double fairly on display at the National Railway Museum in York. And representing the Linton and Barnstaple Railway is number 761, Taw by Helgen, wearing the Southern Olive livery. Don't buy this engine. It sucks, and I hate it. It looks good, but looks are deceiving. It derails on points, and its wheelbase is too long for standard Pico curve tracks. I don't know if Helgen have improved these since the first release, but these first ones, ugh. I'm not sure why I even still have this, to be honest. And here's Cute Little Brito Mart by Bachman. This little blue Hunslet worked at the Penner or said quarry before being preserved on the Festiniog in real life. 
All the Bachman Hunslets were tempting, but I knew if I were going to grab any of them, it had to be the blue one. And the game changer in the world of 009, the Baldwin number no. 2, Peggy, from the Ashover Railway. Bachman's Baldwins truly trailblazed the surge in 009 that we're seeing right now. This was the first ready-to-run 009 loco produced by a big company, and they hit a home run with it. It runs beautifully, it has lots of detail, and it was fairly priced. I'm very happy to own one. You can't have a narrow gauge collection without some sort of Scarlowy Railway representation. Bachman's Scarlowy from their Thomas range also played a huge part in Trailblazing 009, because this is a quality little model. Almost entirely die cast and on a great chassis. I modded mine a little bit, swapping the chubby CGI face with a smaller Ertl one. Looks a lot better, I think. And what's a Scarlowy without a Reneus? Reneus, while still good, is definitely a step down from Scarlowy in terms of quality. He is a lot lighter, and his chassis is a little more fickle, I find. I was in the process of modding my Reneus before I moved, so he's kind of stuck in a mid-mod hiatus state, with a new funnel that I have not painted yet. He has a new face, though. Of course I picked up Peter Sam. Peter Sam almost rivals Scarlowy, I think. They really tried with this one. My Peter Sam is also in a mid-mod state, and I plan to cover up the exposed motor with a piece of black plastic. His face has also been replaced with the Ertl one, and it looks pretty good on him. Something I've been trying to expand within my collection is American representation. I've been taking an interest in American railways quite a bit more in the past year, and I've acquired a number of American locos since we last looked at everything. Let's take a look at what's here. We'll start with steam locomotives. I don't have enough engines to really divvy them up by railroad, so we'll just keep it simple. This smart little tank engine is a Porter 060 by Bachman, numbered 102 for the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. I love this thing. I found it on eBay used and expected it to run inconsistently. But to my shock, it is a great runner. Lots of detail packed into this little guy. Next up is a real stunner. The Pennsylvania Railroad Streamlined K4 Class, number 3768, by Broadway Limited. So, I have a weakness, and that weakness is American Streamliners. I adore this era, and streamlined locomotives are just so striking. This is one of the most quality models in my whole collection, being entirely made of metal, working lamp, and working smoke. Usually, I'd never even consider a model of this caliber, but someone on eBay had it up for a bargain, so I figured why not? I only wish I had some proper coaches for this to pull. I gotta represent my West Coast roots. Here is Southern Pacific number 4449, The Daylight, as preserved today. This is the cheaper version of the model by Bachman, and yeah, it definitely is not the greatest quality. It's a mostly plastic body, and it's quite light, especially the tender. It's not a great runner either, but I'm just happy to have a model of the Streamliner on my coast. I would love to one day upgrade to a Broadway Limited one, though. Well, if I have the West Coast Streamliner, then I should have the East Coast as well, right? Here is the Norfolk and Western's J-Class by Bachman. It's not the preserved 611. I have 610. 611 cost a lot more, so I figured one number off was fine. This is a pretty great model. It's very heavy and it runs really well. It's a bit too long for the curves on my layout though, which is a bit disappointing. Moving on to electric engines now. Here we have a Pennsylvania Railroad GG1, number 4890, wearing the Tuscan Red livery. I love the GG1s. They are my favorite electric engines. They're massive, and they have a very Art Deco look to them. Bachman's GG1s are the best ones on the market. They are affordable, they feel quality, and they run like a dream. And I love the GG1s so much, I got another one. This one is in the black livery of the Penn Central. This is when everyone starts booing. Wearing the number 4882. Only reason I sought this one out is because I wanted a GG1 in the livery the GG1s wore when they towed Flying Scotsman during its USA tour. I love posing this with Scotsman behind it. 
even though the height difference is a bit off. We have quite a few diesels this time. First up is a very recognizable one. An F unit in the Santa Fe Red and Silver livery by MTH. It's an older model and the tooling is definitely outdated, but I still like it. I found it at a train show last year and couldn't pass it up. I currently live in Washington State, and I've been taking an interest in the local railroads that ran through here. The most famous is the Great Northern Railway, and its Empire Builder service to Chicago. Here we have another F unit in the Great Northern Orange livery. This one is by Athern. Again, it's an older tooling, but I quite like it. I'd love to eventually get a B unit and another A unit to make a proper configuration. Got another Great Northern pal here, an Alco RS2, number 204, by Lifelike. Not sure what year this guy came out, but it looks and feels a lot newer than the F units. This guy runs like a dream. Up next is a far more modern engine, the iconic F40PH in the Amtrak livery by Bachman. Last year I went on a huge Amtrak history rabbit hole, thanks to Amtrak Guy 365's wonderful channel, and I just had to get one. I got this one used, and the previous owner painted over the numbers. It runs like it's brand new though. I quite like it. And here is a diesel from a railroad that never came to be. A Walther's GP9 in the ill-fated Southern Pacific Santa Fe Railroad Kodachrome livery. The story of this railroad's failure is pretty interesting. Peter Dribble has a fantastic video on it on his channel. My local hobby shop had one of these guys in stock, so I decided to pick it up. I'd love to find another one with the SF on the other end to create a matching pair. And finishing off the American Locos is one that is in a category all its own. A cable car from the San Francisco Municipal Railway by Bachman. I'm from SF, so I had to have one of these things. It's not a great runner or anything, but it is a fun novelty. I love pulling this one out and running it. A small American cable car on a British mainline railway in the countryside is the most out of place thing ever, and I love it. Welp, that's it for all the real engines. Now it's time to venture off to the island of Sodor and take a look at the friendly faces that work there. I have two categories within this section, my custom, uh, we'll say realistic models, and the Bachman brand ones that are more accurate to the TV show. Let's dive on in. First up is a model that you have all seen on this channel a hundred times. It's my own custom model of Thomas, using a baby E2 body from Sparkshot Custom Creations on the chassis of a Dapple Terrier. The body was painted and lined out by myself. Thomas suffered a bit of a fall during the move into the new house, and part of the railing around his coal bunker has broken off. I was pretty upset when I found out, but it's no matter. I would like to redo many of my models in future anyway. Thomas is definitely one of them. And next up is Edward. Edward was made using a Hornby D16 with some modifications, most notably the chimney, coupled up to a Bachman N-Class tender. Edward was one of the first models I ever made, and it has sentimental value to me for that reason. But it is definitely one I want to redo at some point. It's not accurate to the books by any means, and it doesn't really run that well. But I still love him. Next up is Henry, who was made using a standard Hornby Black 5. Henry runs pretty well, and I have really no issues with him. His paint job could be a bit better though, and I'd love to redo it at some point using an airbrush. And here we have Gordon, who is my personal favorite of the bunch. Gordon was made using a Hornby A3 class, coupled up to a Bachman LNER Group Standard Tender. This is the model I think I spent the most time with, spending hours lining out all the frames and the running board, and it was well worth it as I love looking at him. And here we have James, another one that I'd like to redo at some point. James was made using a Bachman J11, and I extended the running board at his front using modeling wood and gave him a front pony truck. Shockingly, James is a fantastic runner and I've never had any issues with servicing him. I would like to redo him though, with a body shape a little closer to the book illustrations. And here's Percy. Percy was made using the GWR shunter body on Shapeways, fitted to a Hornby Pug chassis. The Hornby Pug chassis is awful, and thus, Percy doesn't run too well. 
As much as I love the overall proportions of this, the paintwork I'm not totally happy with, and I'd love to redo it using an airbrush. And also fit the body onto a better chassis, perhaps a Peckett, or even a Barclay, if I can still get my hands on one. Here is Toby, one of the easiest customs ever. He was made using a Rapido J70 class tram engine. Simply painted the side plates blue, lined out his trim with a tan color, added a 7, and voila, it's Toby. No qualms here. Here we have Duck. Duck was made using the body from a mainline brand pannier tank with the correct cab windows, fitted to a more recent Bachmann pannier chassis. I painted him in a mint green to match the look of the illustrations more. I've seen some people state I made this color like an actual livery in my own headcanon, NWR mint green or whatever, and I assure you, that's not the case. I just like the color is all. No need to overthink it. I definitely would like to redo Duck as well. Though with Scale recently announcing they plan to make the real Duck soon, I guess I won't really need to. And here is Donald, made from a Bachman 812 class. This was one of the easier customs, as no modding was necessary. Just a simple new paint job. And voila, it's Donald. And here's the Bachman 812 I intend to turn into Douglas. I asked you all a long time ago if I should make him blue to match Donald, or keep him black just to be different. I have decided I'm going to go with blue to be consistent, though I am still waiting to start him. I want to redo the other models at some point using an airbrush, and I think it'd be kind of silly to start Douglas before getting one. And here is Oliver, who is dead. Yep, this was made using a crappy old Dapple 1400 class, and the lad died on me. I'm not happy with the finish on Oliver, and I'd like to redo him as well at some point. Ideally, I'd like to use a DJ Models 1400 for him, but that's probably out of the question since they are so rare now. God, I pray a company does a new 1400. I really, really hate the old Dapple one, and Hornby refuses to stop re-releasing it. Here is Salty, probably my second favorite of the fleet. He was made using a Helgen Class 07, painted red, with weathering added. The weathering came out so good on him, I am really happy with this one. It's one of the few here that I have no interest in redoing whatsoever. I love him as is. Here is Arthur, made from a Bachman 2MT tank. I'd like to redo him at some point too, not because I'm unhappy with the finish, but because I think the shade of red is off. It's a little too orange in my opinion, and I feel like it should be darker. He'll get redone at some point, but he's like the lowest priority. And finishing off the customs fleet with Burt Spencer, or just Spencer for short. Made from a Hornby A4 that I modified a bit, Spencer is one I am unhappy with the finish on. I don't know if it's because he is white or not, but I tend to notice the brush strokes in his paint more than the others, and it bothers me personally. He will also be redone at some point with an airbrush. Moving on to the TV accurate stuff now. First up is Thomas in his LBSC livery from The Adventure Begins. I am so happy that Bachman made this. What a fun collector's item. I did remove the face and the eye mechanism and replace them with a 3D printed face instead. And here is my prop replica Thomas, the one that you all keep asking for a video on. I made this using the Bachman Thomas as a base and cutting and sanding it all down. I cut out the gap between the tanks and the splasher, I sanded the bands down on the boiler, I cut out the cab, repainted the entire thing, and extended the chassis frame with card. A lot of work went into this. And while I would like to show a whole video on the process, it's pretty old now. And I feel that so many others have made far more accurate prop replicas than me. But until then, he will continue to pop up in videos. Here is the Bachman Edward, with the only change being the face swapped with a 3D printed one. I actually really love the Bachman Edward. It's very close to the prop in terms of proportions. And here's my prop replica Edward, one of the few that I've actually finished. I shaved off his handrails and gave him separately fitted ones, a all new paint job, and real cool in his tender. And he turned out rather nice, I think. Here we have a standard Percy with the awful Bachman face swapped with a 3D printed one. Amazing how much just a simple face change lifts these models. Here we have Toby. 
I cut out all the windows and doorways on Toby, so it'd not just be a brown box on a chassis anymore, and it makes a huge difference. Here is a stock standard duck. I removed his eye mech and gave him posable eyes. Other than that, no change. And here's my prop replica duck, complete with separately fitted handrails and a new paint job. I think the green is a little too bright personally, and I'd like to redo that. His handrails came out perfect though. Here's a standard Bachman Donald, now with posable eyes. No change here. And here's a standard Bachman Douglas, also now with posable eyes. And here's the Bachman Oliver, one of their most controversial releases. I never really thought twice about getting Oliver for myself, if I'm honest. But my fiancé got me him for Christmas, and after holding him in hand, I actually quite like him. He's a perfect replica of the CGI Oliver. It's just that the CGI Oliver kind of sucks. Here's my prop accurate diesel. I cut out the cab windows and sprayed them with a matte finish. A very simple mod, but effective. I love the Bachman diesel, it is such a brick, and it's one of their best ones in my opinion. Here is a standard bill, now with posable eyes. Didn't change much else. And a standard Ben, also now with posable eyes. Again, didn't change much. And a standard Daisy, also now with posable eyes. I love the Bachman Daisy. This thing is probably the best runner of the entire Thomas line. I only wish that the windows were transparent, but I understand why they didn't do that. It is a mod I'd like to do to mine eventually. Here we have Mavis with posable eyes. I cut the windows out of her cab as well, and it makes quite the difference. And here we have Salty. I'd love to cut the windows out of his cab at some point too. Salty is a rather underrated model in my opinion, because he is also a fantastic runner. His face is so accurate as well. Here we have a standard Emily with posable eyes. And I haven't changed anything else on her yet. A standard Spencer, with the only mod being I painted the interior of his tender black. And he looks a little better now, I think. And here is Rosie and her red paint job. Another one that my fiance got me for Christmas, and I am shocked by how much I like her. The open cab is impressive, especially for a Thomas model. She's also a bit heavier than I expected. Kudos, Bachman. And the newest model of the entire collection, Ryan. And he is a really good one. A little on the lighter side, but the attention to detail on his bodywork makes up for it. The separately fitted handrails, the open cab, the perfectly accurate face. Yeah, this is a real winner. In an era where every toy line is transitioning over to All Engines Go merchandise, it is such a godsend that Bachman is still over here making the characters from the old show that we all want, and trying their damnedest to make them as accurately as possible. I am very excited for Stanley. I do have some bodies from other prop accurate models that I attempted in the past, such as Gordon, Henry, James, but I decided not to feature them here because they are all in pieces at the moment. Maybe one of these days I'll get around to finishing them. Wow, it took over an hour to go through everything. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe it's a sign that I need to start thinning out my collection a bit. Hmm, uh, nah. One can never have too many trains, right? I'd love to give you all an update on what's coming here, but I really got nothing for you this time. My New Year's video pretty much covered everything. I am getting married next month, so that's pretty exciting. I'm heads down in wedding stuff at the moment, and any spare time I have I've been spending on my model railway. I've actually done a ton of work to it since the last layout video, so I'll use this chance to shout out my Instagram again. That is the best place to stay up to date on everything that's going on with the railway. I recently just set up a brand new turntable, and I am very happy with it. Much better than the crappy Hornby one. 
Link to my Instagram is in the description. So that's really it all. Once again, big shout out to all my patrons for your continued support. I love all of you, and you are all the ones that keep my channel going. Have a great day everyone, and I will see you all in the next one.